Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography on our channel. Now, in today's session on world regional geography, we are going to learn about the very interesting realm called the Austral Realm. Now this austral realm comprises of Australia and New Zealand areas of the world. So we are going to cover the geographical aspects of these two specific countries, Australia and New Zealand. So let's observe. But before we go ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about the austral realm if you observe here. So these are the territories around Australia if you observe. So this is Western Australia, Northern Territory, then you have Southern Australia, New South Wales and Queensland. That is the major division of the austral realm in terms of Australia. And then we have the North and South portions of the New Zealand. So basically if you observe this particular area, it has lot of oceanic right from Indian Ocean to this particular Pacific Ocean and a lot of other seas around it. Timor Sea, Arafura Sea, then you have Gulf of Carpentaria and then you have Tasman Sea. So all these water bodies are very important water bodies that are surrounding this particular realm. And also one important point to learn here is that despite their inclusion in a single geographic realm as well, these two distinct land masses are very different from each other geographically. Australia has a vast desertic condition, dry condition while New Zealand also has a mountainous and temperate condition largely. So this is one important feature and also if you observe Tropic of Capricorn almost bisects Australia into the north and the south. That is very important and interesting feature. Now let's observe the little around Australia and what all areas are there, what all seas and what all places are there. So right from this particular Indian Ocean section, there are many islands here near Timor Sea here. Then if you go further north, you have Gulf of Kerpen area here which has a lot of river connections out here and remember this area we studied in geomorphology in the example for Pan Plain by Crickme. And this is the very important feature in terms of geography that is the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, the Coral Sea, Coral Islands Territory. So this is a huge feature, almost 1200 miles long and that is near the Queensland Territory. Then if you observe coming south, you have Tasman Sea. This is Tasmania out here and the Bass Strait. Then in down south, you have Great Australian Blight that you say observe here, right? This is Perth, this is Victoria and several divisions that you observe in the central part you see the desertic conditions that exist out here. Apart from this, one important thing is that most of these cities, Australian cities are in the coastal zones here and the central portion is the arid condition that we talk about. So let's observe further in terms of New Zealand. So if you observe the northern part, this is the Auckland portion here, Hamilton, the Great Barrier Island that is important here, Barrier Island between the mainland and Pacific Ocean. Then you have Cape Ringa and then you, this is called North Cape. The Hapua, right? This is Tasman Sea. Here you have the Cook Strait, very important. Captain James Cook, right? On whose name this Cook Strait is there. You have Wellington out here, exactly on this Cook Strait, this particular portion. And then you have the southern part of New Zealand, which is having the Southern Alps. So if you observe, this entire area is mountainous. And you have Christchurch out here. This is the coastal road out here, very important. And then in down south, you have this strait called Fovu Strait and Stewart Island. Right. So these are the important features around it. Then let's observe some important rivers and water bodies again in terms of the specific rivulets and river system of Australia. So if you observe carefully, this is the Australia physiography and rivers obviously obey the physiography of this condition. So if you observe the major basin here is the Murray Basin out here and the Darling Basin here. So Murray and Darling Basin is part of largely the New South Wales and some portions of the Queensland part of Australia. And if you observe carefully the river name and how much area they occupy, this is what is the data if you can see on your screen here, right? And so if you observe carefully all the coastal zones, specifically this portion of Australia has a lot of river and this portion has some rivers but rest of the middle portions do not have much of river and water bodies. So it's also dry condition, desertic condition that's important here. So now let's look into the details of Australian physiography and if you observe carefully 
right from the west if you say this is northwest basin out here then you have hamsterly range out here then the great sandy desert again basin now this area which you see in green color this entire area the greenish area if you observe is tropical and subtropical grasslands and forest region so king leopold kimberley plateau right then you have rm land gulf of carpentaria this carpentaria region very famous the basin area then you have cape york pennin then further you have the plateau region and this is the great dividing range which divides these coastal plains with this particular area if you carefully observe the desert and semi-desertic condition right in the down south you have darling range you club basin the great australian blight that you observe Erie Pennin. so this is part of southern australia victoria kangaroo island tasmania bus Strait, all these places but most of the central australia are having plateau and some ranges like mcdonnell ranges gibson desert simpson desert all these areas like musgrave ranges stuart range victorian the great victorian desert so if you observe 90% almost of Australia is a desertic or semi-arid condition, semi-desertic condition and rest of the areas are in the coastal areas, coastal plains and some basins of the river that is Murray-Darling River Basin where most of the population and big cities are there. So if you observe few features which are of geographical and geomorphological significance. So this is called Ayers Rock if you observe, also called Uluru right by the aboriginal people. So this kind of rock structure we have studied in geomorphology and remember the term which is a German word Inselberg used by Walter Penck in his studies. So this Inselberg feature is one of the oldest cratons of the earth that formed during Precambrian and now you have a tourism associated of this Uluru if you observe. So these petty plains around it and this entire plain area desertic semi-desertic conditions account for a lot of tourism across this portion. If you see the position is almost in the center of Australia. So that's very interesting and one important point about this is that the sunshine over this rock during the daytime is very interesting that it keeps changing the color from different angles. So that's one important point and remember more than 300,000 visitors annually visit this entire important remote rock surface, rock piece on the earth. So it's part of the early cratonization that happened on the earth. Now if you observe further some more features which are like these features of land that are cast features called the 12 apostles these standing rock stumps these stacks which are here so they were total 12 in number and gradually they are now eroded with time and this is where you'll find this portion the southern part this particular apollo bay the great ocean road which connects melbourne to this particular adelaide so if you go through this route you'll find 12 apostles here right so this is a particular location port campbell national park this entire area is famous for the unique geodiversity in the world and the time of formation of this is late Miocene around 15 to 5 million years ago and this is important and very interesting feature. Now let's observe the other parts of the realm and one of the most important feature of this realm is the interesting biogeography. So if you remember the animals like kangaroos, koalas, wallabies, wombats, possums, platypuses. These are something very unique to this particular realm and also the floral species like eucalyptus and several others. So this is very interesting and remember this scholar, the naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace. Remember we have done A.R. Wallace classification in biogeography as well. So he made this particular realm and their boundary. So if you see this boundary, the red boundary, this is Wallace line means this entire area is having a very unique characteristic and this is different from this inside and this is outside then you have the Weber's line as well so this is another scholar so if you observe these are certain important features which make Austral realm a very unique biogeographic location on the planet now if you observe further the population geography of Australia as you have seen the physiography it all talks about where is the fertile area where is the residential area all of these are available spatially in the eastern northeastern and southeastern coasts and some on the western but more desertification is happening in the western side so this is how the population distribution looks like and further if you observe the population distribution through this political divisions and capitals if you observe so here is the queensland area the great artisanal basin then you have this brisbane out here in the north townsville is very famous because from here you can go to this barrier reef and then brisbane coming down south you have sydney here canberra here then melbourne out here then 
then you have adelaide here and this is perth that is very famous but rest of the australia does not have much bigger cities so this is one interesting feature now let's observe furthermore in terms of the agriculture and mineral resources in this realm so in Australia, agriculture, as you can observe, is also concentrated in the river valleys, Murray and Darling Basin, and some areas in the western portion of Australia as well. But remember, it's very rich in the natural endowments, specifically if you observe these metallic minerals because of its geological structure and Precambrian origin, if you observe. So look here, these Asbestos, silver, gold, bauxite, copper, manganese, nickel, lead, coal, tungsten, zinc, uranium, all these are found in abundance in Australia and they are now being mined at an industrial scale. That's very important and that is where most of their economy is coming from. So economic boom is basically coming from these resources and also tourism and several other factors in terms of international trade. So this is what you observe in the map of Australia here. Now further if you observe the divisions that that is the Northern Territory, the Queensland, Western and Southern and New South Wales and observe one feature that is very important in today's world. What is it? environmental degradation and water stress areas. So if you observe the water stress areas are also those areas which are populated areas. And that's a very important thing to understand that in Australia environmental degradation is very importantly creating havocs. Most of the time people are talking about desertification, land degradation, mining activities have rampant the entire Australian region. And this is also talked about in very various environmental talks that Australia is losing by the day. So now what you observe is people are flying off leaving this western Australian regions because of water stress as well and if you have observed that many times Perth is also going to be said as the new ghost city that is going to be environmentally created. It's because of environmental stress that people are going to leave western Australia soon that's being talked about right now. So if you observe bushfires were very common and are very common because this area of Australia has a lot of impact of drought prone areas, dryness is very extreme, especially season wise dryness if you observe. So in winter this area is very dry, the Darwin, this port and then adjoining Carpentaria region. Then if you observe the red one is summer and autumn in the down south and gradually you can observe carefully. So these bush fires are creating a lot of problems and they are in news. Also the impact of El Nino and the drought conditions and remember this point here West Coast Perth is also going to become the first ghost metropolis as people are talking about it due to the acute water shortages and the loss of flora and fauna. Look at the wildlife what's happening because of the bush fires. So this is very important important point to take care of and then further if you observe the territory wise what you observe is the population of the older tribes of Australia the aborigines so if you observe only 3.8 percent in the northern territory the desertic conditions they are almost 30 percent then Queensland 4.2 percent South Australia 2.3 percent New South Wales 1.9 percent Victoria 0.9 percent and almost 4.7 percent in Tasmania so that is one important thing that is also part of the population geography right and prior to 1992 Australians had taken these aborigines for granted until high court intervened and said that these people should be given the rights. So a subsequent court decision if you observe implied that enormous areas almost 78% of Australia belongs to these tribal people right. Now if you observe the New Zealand area so in the era of globalization Australia is becoming more stronger and it's connecting the world with the trade and technology but remember New Zealand is also one important area of the world for trade for tourism. So in the northern island this area if you observe from north Auckland is the main center here and you have so many mineral centers that you observe mining is happening but most of this mountain and valley region across is having dairy farming and the specialized horticulture and also mixed farming that you observe. So forestry wilderness is the major green areas then you have a lot of minerals being found out here which is the mainstay and also because of being on the ring of fire New Zealand also gets a lot of jolts of earthquake almost 10,000 earthquakes every year out of which 150 are of severe nature. So this is one bigger challenge out here and also the challenge is to get connected with the rest of the world. So they are working on it and also they are considered one of the very peace loving nation. Kiwi is one species that is very famous for this particular country that is New Zealand. So now when we have discussed various aspects of the austral realm in today's session in the sessions to come we'll be talking more about the Pacific and 
and also Antarctic and Arctic regions of the world. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please do share the videos with others as well.